Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about how to record deposits and retainers in QuickBooks Online. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We always record the live session with you so you can re review the video afterwards. Customer deposits and retainers. Who needs them? I need them. You need them. I started actually collecting money up front from customers a few years back for one simple reason. I learned from a vendor of mine who did that. And when I asked him about it, he said, look, I got to be honest with you. I just I don't want to spend time chasing people for money. I just want to run my business and help people. And I said, you know what? I like that concept. And so I started doing it. I started collecting money, taking deposits and retainers from customers up front. Who else does this? Lawyers do it. Construction companies, Rock Castle Construction, may very well want to collect deposits uh, in construction. Uh, at least I know in the state of California, the law is you have to swing the first hammer, break ground before you can take a deposit from a customer. But they can certainly do it, and it's certainly a good idea too, right? Because of the reasons that I just described. You, who wants to spend time chasing people for money? I just want to provide the service I provide. I don't want the chasing of money to even be an issue, right? If you're serious about hiring me for my services, then it shouldn't be a problem. Pay me, I'll do the work. I promise. I promise. So, we want to be able to record that. Let me try and say that a little more slowly so I don't swallow my words. We want to be able to record that in QuickBooks. And we're going to look at the new QuickBooks Online interface because uh, I've done this for the desktop already and I think it would be interesting to see how it's done in QuickBooks Online. So, let's take a look. We're going to need a few things. We're looking at a sample company file and we need to create the liability account. Now why is this a liability? Because if you pay me in advance and I haven't provided you with the product or service that you're paying me for yet, then I owe you something. I either owe you the product or the service or I owe you back the money you paid me. One way or the other, the money you give me if I haven't earned it yet is a liability to me. I have to, I have to perform on that. I have to give something back in exchange for that value, if not the money itself. So it's a liability. So let's do that. Let's go add the liability to our chart of accounts. Now, where's the chart of accounts? Let's take a quick look. You might have seen I've done a video or two already on the new QuickBooks Online interface. But if we want to, and I'll just tell you very quickly, if you want to do anything that has to do with the company at large, that's going to be here. Now, here it says sample company. In your experience, it will actually have your company name there. If this were my own company file on here, it would say Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. When I click that, I get all the company related stuff, right? I have the accountant options because I have the accountant's version, of course. Um, and under lists, I can go to all lists right here. And that's where I'm going to find the chart of accounts. So I click on my company. I get all my company settings. Over here, I get my lists. Click on that. And sure enough, there's my chart of accounts. So let's create a new account. We need an account called Customer Deposits or you can call it customer retainers, or you can call it customer deposits and retainers. Whatever you want to call it. You call it whatever you want. Call it Mary Jo. But make sure that, in all seriousness, make sure that whoever is reading your balance sheet later on is going to understand what you mean based on the name of your account. So I just like to be very straightforward about it. Customer deposits, deposits slash retainers. Okay, everything else uh, needs to be fixed now because it's not accounts receivable. We need to choose the category type. It's other current liabilities. And then I have a detail type to choose from. So I'm just going to choose very simply other current liabilities. But I urge you, if you're creating a new account, to take a look at your choices here because it'll be helpful if there is an option that's specific to what you need if you choose it. Right? There's reasons for this. I promise you, they're not wasting their time over it and to it when they make this stuff up. It's, it's there for your benefit. So take your time, go slow, and you know, understand what's here, what's in front of you, and how it might be useful. Click Save. We've got the account on the books. Let's make sure it's there. There it is, Customer Deposits and Retainers. Next thing I need is I need a service item because I want to be able to bill my client for the deposit or the retainer. Why? Well, for one thing, a lot of the clients are going to ask me for that. They're going to say, I need an invoice to pay off of. So I want to be able to produce an invoice that's not mapped to any income because I haven't earned anything yet. I want to be able to create an invoice with an item that's mapped to the liability account so I can capture the deposit. Because it's done through an invoice, it will be tied to the customer, and you're going to see why that's important later. In fact, we're going to now create the item, and then we're going to create two invoices for two different customers using that item. 
uh, for the simple reason that in the reporting I want to show you how you can segregate by customer and create a really nice report out of this that makes it easy for you to see who's got how much on deposit with you. So let's do that. So we've created the account. Now let's go over to our list. So guess where we're going for the list. Anything having to do with company and lists is here in the company menu. And here we have a this quick link right to products and services under lists. I don't even have to go to all lists. I can go right to products and services. Right in the desktop edition, that's called your item list. So over here, I need a new item. We're going to click new or a new product or service. So we're going to call this deposit, right? At this level, I want to keep it really simple. And then over here, the income account, customer deposit slash retainers. So again, because it's a service item, it's the idea is normally it's linked to an income account. But we're just using this a little differently. And if you think in terms of your debits and credits, then you can make this, you know, sort of make this make sense to you. So debit and credit wise, when I post an invoice and I choose an item, whatever income account that item is linked to, in other words, whichever account is here, is being credited. Credits increase income. So when we invoice for a service, we want to increase income. That works. When we invoice for a deposit or retainer, that's a liability account. Credits also increase liabilities. So that's what we want. Of course, the debit side of the invoice is accounts receivable. So we want to link, and, and it helps if you understand the debits and credits because it helps you put these things together so that you understand, A, how they work, two, how to create them, right? Because that's what I had to do at some point is I had to sit down and think, well, normally I invoice for a service item. It's linked to an income account. Well, obviously then whatever item is linked to that income account, it's crediting that income account. The, the journal entries, I'm debiting accounts receivable, crediting whatever account is here attached to the item that I've chosen, right? So I'm giving you some bookkeeping basics here, a little bonus tip. Um, so that's how you think these things through. So that's how I know when I post an invoice and I use this item that's mapped to this account that it's going to credit or increase the liability, right? If I use an expense account, it's going to decrease the expense. Credits decrease expenses. So it helps to know your debits and credits, kids. It helps a lot, especially if you're doing bookkeeping. Got to say it. So now we've got our item. I've got my item. Where did it go? Deposit. Right, the account it's mapped to, customer deposits and retainers. Perfect, I've got my account, I've got my item, I'm ready to produce an invoice. An invoice is a transaction. Transactions can be found right here. Click on the plus sign, it means I wanna add something new, right, I wanna create, right? So initially I get the short menu and I can go right to creating an invoice. If you wanna see more, click show more and you've got every possible kind of transaction you could wanna create, right? Expense, check, bill, so on and so forth. So let's create an invoice. And I'm just going to pick on the first two customers in the list here and take deposits from them. So I get the name up. The information, of course, fills in. Notice the new QuickBooks Online interface. It lets you know, in this case, that there's billable time. So it gives you little notices here about things that you might want to know so that you don't, you know, sort of uh, double enter something. Um, in any case, I start typing deposit. That comes up. Hit the tab key. Let's take a $1,500 deposit from Amy's Bird Sanctuary. And then down here, I can save and send, which I would do if this were for real. Or I can, the default here is save and close. If I click the arrow, save and new. Boom, let's get one more retainer in. Let's do Bill's Windsurf Shop. Now, Bill's Windsurf Shop, we're going to need 2000 from him. Those windsurfer guys, they're a little unreliable. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sure Bill's a great guy. So... I've got my deposit, $2,000 from him, and we're going to say save and close. Now the last piece for today. We want to look at how do I report on this? How do I know how much I've got and who I've got it from, right? So let's go to the balance sheet. Let's go run the balance sheet. So let's go over, actually over here on the left is reports, right? So I click reports, balance sheet, and I come down here. And my customer deposits is not showing up probably because of the dates. So let's change the dates to all dates. Run report. And here's my customer deposits and retainers. So if I click on this, of course, with only two in there, it's pretty clear to see. But imagine when you have 10 different customers, each with a deposit and retainer. I don't want to be looking at this in one long list. I want to be able to total it by customer, right? So let's customize. We want to customize the report because we want to total it or group by customer. And I'm giving you a hint there, of course. Under rows and columns here in the customization, I click this drop down and I want to group by customer. And then I run the report. 
and now I've got it segregated by customer so it's nice and clear that I've got a $1,500 uh, amount on deposit from Amy's Bird Sanctuary, $2,000 from Bill's Windsurf Shop. Now next thing that's going to happen is they're going to pay the invoice, right? So I'd rather than have it all in one amount column, I want to be able to break this up into debits and credits. Let's see if uh, I've noticed that some reports in QuickBooks Online let you do that and some don't. Let's see if this one does. So if I customize, okay, and then the columns, I want to change columns. Okay, so let's see if I have debit and credit. I sure do. So if I go debit and credit right here, let's move these down to where the amount is. Now this is based on a liability account, right? So initially the credits come in to increase them and then the debits come in when they get paid to decrease them. So let's do it in that order, credit then debit. It's going to be a little weird because usually you would see debits first, but I think for the, in terms of how I want this displayed, that'll work better. And I'm leaving the amount in just to make sure. So this works. So I can bring it in. This way, what happens when Amy's Bird Sanctuary pays their deposit, it'll be very clear. I'll see the 1500 coming in as they're you know, it's me charging them or, or saying, hey, I need a deposit from you. And then the payment will show up in the debit column to zero out. I can get rid of the amount column. I don't necessarily need that in here. So customize, change columns, and remove. I select the amount and remove and OK and run report. So now I'm done. And of course, what I'd want to do at this point is I'd want to save customizations, which is another way of saying memorize the report. I would name the report, add it to a group. All the same features that you have on the desktop edition are here, and you can use this and use it well. And then your other people who are in other parts of the country or the world can log into your QuickBooks file, and they can run those same reports. And you don't have to send them a backup, and you don't have to worry about them logging into your server or doing any of that. You just set them up as your accountant, and they can have at it and they can log in or you set up your different users so they can log in and have at it and do whatever you need them to do. Of course, that's the beauty of having your accounting solution working in the cloud. As always, if you have any questions, please email me, seth at nerdenterprises.com. I look forward to answering all of your questions. Visit me on the web at www.nerdenterprises.com. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you on the web.